In this video, I want to show you some of the fundamentals when creating mid surface geometry for finite element analysis. I'll be using this uh, solid geometry to demonstrate these concepts. The first step in the process is to go ahead and extract the mid surfaces. Now, the basic idea is you take a one face, create a mid surface there, then uh, project it inward. Here, I'm just creating some base mid surfaces. As you can imagine, the resulting mid surfaces are not complete. They're actually pretty disconnected and uh, far from being complete. What I then have to manually do is take all of these free edges and connect them to one another. Here, just to show you an example, I've created a base mid surfaces, but again, there's still these missing uh, sections in the mid surface model. I have to go ahead and come, uh, basically create. What I can do is manually take an edge and drag it upward and do that again and again. Here I'll just take this edge and drag it up to the solid face. So let's go ahead and do a few undos and show you what the result looks like. And to better show this, maybe uh, I'll go ahead and color this all purple. Maybe a different color actually. Let's do red. Here's one example at the bottom left where I can take the edge and drag it up to this face. Do the same thing here. And we'll do a before and afters to show what the result looks like. And we'll continue this throughout the model. This edge, for example, is completely uh, missing. I'll just take the edge and drag it up here. So it's aligned to the solid face. I'll t take this edge and then drag it up to this face. And now there's this sort of issue here where I would have to take each edge here and drag it up to, which is doable. There's an alternative method where if you split the surface, you can just get one continuous uh, edge. And this saves you the work of having to drag every um, individual edge. If I take this last edge and move it here, I'm essentially done with uh, most of the mid surface geometry. One thing to keep in mind is when you mesh and assign some thick thickness and offset properties to this, you have this variation in thickness you'll want to capture in the mid surface geometry. So we'll go ahead and introduce a few splits in the geometry. So let me select uh, these faces. I'll select the solid geometry edges to act as guides for the split. So keep close attention to the bottom. Um, again, the orange lines are the guides for the split. And then after the execution, the green lines are the actual splits on the geometry. Now what I can do to finish this is take the vertices and drag them left and right. Another benefit of doing this in the application is you can have a mesh superimposed and continue your modeling while the update or the geometry updates itself. And there you have it, a completed uh, mid surface geometry with mesh. And now let's redo this using a different method. This is the so called semi automatic method. We'll use the concept of an incremental workflow where we first start off with these color-coded surface pairs. The basic idea here is that you're taking one of the sides of the pairs and you're projecting an inward uh, mid surface. Here as an example, I've selected this pair here. It will either take the left or the right pairs and create a mid surface here in this example, it went ahead and used the right or this side of the pair to create the mid surface. But like we did in the first half of the video, we want to use the other side. So to do this, we'll use the offset type. There are four offset types, but in this video, I'll just mention two. There is the right offset type, which is using 
this side of the pair to project a min surface, then there's the left offset type, which will go ahead and use the opposing uh, side of the fit or the pair. So we'll go ahead and confirm that we want to use the other side of the red offset type. If we go back and extract the mid surface, we find we have a clean mid surface as we intended. We'll select this mid surface too, and it seems it's the mid surface we want. Let's go ahead and now select every pair here and extract our mid surfaces. And here with a few clicks uh, using the incremental workflow method of the semi-automatic approach, we've achieved uh, extracted mid surfaces are close to completion. Uh, the last thing to do is consolidate a lot of these uh, free edges that you see throughout the model. Uh, before in the first half of the video, I manually showed you how to move an edge and consolidate uh, free edges like that. This time I'll go ahead and use an automatic approach to extend the surface edges. Here I'll take uh, this edge, split it. My goal right now is just to reduce the number of free edges we have throughout the model. And now it's just a matter of taking all these uh, surfaces and extract and extruding the edges. One thing to keep in mind while you're using this tool is you need a search distance. So what I need to do is uh, measure how far the biggest gaps are from one another and I see that 27 is about the biggest gap I need to be able to cover. So here use 27 millimeters and it select all the surfaces. That one didn't work out so well so I'm going to try something higher. And now we have an extension that completed the mid-surface geometry. Uh, like before, you can go ahead and create the splits uh, for the model. I'll skip that portion. Now I'll focus more on the mesh and the thickness and offset portion of the video. There's an automated method to create your offset types. Here I'll select the shell mesh and the mid-surface geometry as the target. I'll select the solid as the guiding uh, force for generating the thickness and offset properties. Here if I superimpose the solid geometry, I see we did a pretty good job at uh, determining the thickness and offset properties uh, for this model. Um, you can continue iterating on the geometry to better uh, improve the mesh and the thickness and offset properties. And the last thing, uh, you may want to go ahead and export this geometry and mesh. We have various options to do this. You can either do that via Parasolid file format or an SGMBDF file that will include the node points and the elements and even the definitions for the thickness and offset properties. And that concludes this uh, short tutorial.